Greg's is a peculiar thing. In case you don't know, it's a chain based in the United Kingdom that's basically half bakery, half sandwich shop. It's most closely associated with the north of England, where it is a very, very popular place indeed. From their humble beginnings to their PR victories to their clashes with the British government, this is the untold truth of Greg's. Greg's began in 1939 as a simple door-to-door -door bakery round in Newcastle. But that's not quite what you'd call the modern iteration of the company. In fact, in recent years, it's made a massive pivot away from the bakery brand towards a food-on-the-go image with the intention of satisfying the need for breakfast, lunch, and snacks, rather than providing simple treats. Now, Greg's offers everything from sandwiches and salads to soups, yogurt, porridge, fruit pots, and drinks, in addition to more traditional British bakery favorites like sausage rolls and sweet treats. That's not to say those items have been taken out of circulation at Greg's. Far from it, in fact. And you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who associates the name with porridge rather than pasties. But some traditions have taken a hit as Greg's has stepped into this new world. Most notable of all these is bread, which many of the chain stores stopped selling in 2015. The reason? A lack of consumer interest. In early 2019, Greg's hit headlines around the world after it stirred up a bunch of controversy with the release of its vegan sausage roll. In the wake of the company's announcement of their new meat-free roll, notorious offense taker and television personality Piers Morgan took up arms against Greg's for this, tweeting, "'Nobody was waiting for a vegan bloody sausage, you PC ravaged clowns.'" The spat made them the talk of Twitter for at least a few days, and gave the vegan sausage roll more publicity than the company's initial post could ever have done. So much so, in fact, that Greg's fans were left distraught after they showed up hoping to purchase one and see what the fuss was all about, and found that they'd sold out. Not exactly a PR disaster for Greg's, but we're not sure you could say the same for Morgan. In 2012, the UK was deep in the midst of the Conservative government's austerity program, a series of highly controversial policies implemented to try to repair the country's fragile economy in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. It was during this time that Greggs found itself embroiled in a battle against the government when, as part of the austerity budget for that year, Chancellor George Osborne introduced a tax hike of 20% on hot takeout snacks, which included pasties. What became known as the pasty tax pretty much constituted a scandal. Some criticized it as an act of class warfare on the basis that most people who enjoyed the foods hit by the tax were of a lower socioeconomic class. Things weren't helped when Osborne admitted in Parliament that he couldn't remember the last time he had eaten a bake from Greggs. The outrage was real. Ed Miliband immediately went with Ed Balls to Greggs. Yeah. And they both ate a pie, and the Tory cabinet had to all go to Greggs. What is this? <laughs> Eventually, the government was forced into a humiliating climb-down, and a concession was allowed in which pasties and other bakery items were made exempt from the tax if they were allowed to cool down after removal from the oven. It's all in the details. What could possibly be better than tucking into a hot, fresh steak bake? Why, watching someone make one on camera, of course. Luckily, that's exactly what you can do thanks to Greg's More Than Meets the Pie, a documentary series about the company which aired in 2013. The show followed Greg's staff members and workers around the UK as they each went about their assorted jobs. One episode, for example, focused on the Newcastle-based plant, which creates the chain sausage rolls. Another saw a group of women stripped down and bare all in front of a photographer, taking pictures for their naked charity calendar. Dramatic stuff, you understand. According to a review in The Guardian, there's literally no grumbling, no engineered antagonism, posturing, or sneering. Only industrious sorts and hairnets calling sausage rolls my little soldiers. And the sort of cheerily naff parochialism that tends to inspire a faint generalized proud-to-be-Britishness. What's not to love? It's difficult to stress just how successful Greg's has been within the UK, so let's put it into perspective. Greg's has somewhere around 1,850 stores in its home country, and by comparison, there are approximately 1,300 McDonald's restaurants situated in the UK. That means, by number of outlets, Greg's is actually bigger than McDonald's, at least in Britain. There are a few chains that have got the edge on Greg's, in fact. One is Costa Coffee, which, as of 2017, owned 2,389 UK stores, while another is Subway, which opened its 2,000th store in the UK and in Ireland back in 2015. Aside from that, however, you'll find few major companies which have quite managed to match the sheer degree of success that Greggs has achieved, outside of Cornwall at least. It wasn't until 2018 that they opened their first store there, much to the chagrin of locals who didn't appreciate the chain making a knockoff of one of their favorite traditional foods, the Cornish pasty. Still, not too shabby indeed. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite restaurant chains are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.